To my viewers, I want to thank the brothers and sisters and the television viewers that have sent us cards, that have sent us emails of congratulations and whatnot. Uh, this is just not a celebration for us, uh, but it's for the First Church family at large, many thousands that you don't see. This broadcast is dedicated to all of our brothers and sisters that are laboring with us around the world, to them that are listening uh, and watching in Africa and also in Argentina and Venezuela, in Chile and Canada, throughout America, in the Philippines, uh, through the Caribbean, in India, every place where God have taken this uncompromising message of holiness that had the devil and his followers upset. We came a long way from the basement to now. We didn't start out overnight, and this didn't come about overnight either. I had many people ask me, aren't you content? Aren't you satisfied? Not at all, because there's so much more you can do. A lot of ministers have a tendency of getting getting satisfied once they start out small and then become reasonably large deception sets in in the form of contentment because they feel as though they can't do no more or God should I say can't do no more I'm a firm believer that God can do all things when I think of where we are today and where we were yesterday, I, from experience, was told from my former minister that God Almighty have not spoken to us about anything. The work that is taking place now uh, internationally, it was first given to us in a vision. Ever in since you appeared unto me in a vision, God of heaven appeared unto me in a vision. Amen. And stood before me just like a man. Yes, I never forget that heavenly vision. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I never forget that heavenly vision. Right. I will truth when I was fasting three days and three nights, the second day that God of heaven. Amen. I can describe him just like John. Amen. His face was white like light. Yeah. His eyes was as the flame of fire. The hairs of his head was white like wool, white as snow. Thank God, and his garment was down to his feet. Amen. And I looked at him, and out of his mouth came a two-egg sword. Amen. And my room was lit up as a thousand days of lightning. Amen. I couldn't even see the edge of my bed. Amen. And he wanted me to be so sure with him. He opened his hand yes. as he did to Tom. Right. I saw his nail. Yes. And when I came out the vision, I said, my Lord. My no minister died, and we took over his work. No, we didn't inherit somebody else's problem. No. <laughs> Not at all. Mm -hmm. Many of you fellas got it easy. You took over somebody else's work and doing a bad job with that. Amen. We started from scratch. Amen. Scorch earth. Mm -hmm. Grassroots. My uh, former minister told me after I began to discuss with him the things that God Almighty should wait on. Amen. 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 I said we wait on God. That's right. When I was in a false church of my former pastor and I, we battled it out. Until it got to a point there wasn't no peace. When the Holy Ghost was starting to unfold to me the mystery of the truth and begin to make it known, I would preach it. That's right. And he would rise up and say, sit down. You want to preach that stuff? Get it out of here. Right. Some folks ask me, what you going to do? I say, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to stay right here as long as God tell me to stay. Amen. And I'm not going to come out until God tell me to come out. Amen. I laid right there and preached the truth. Right. He sounds me for a year. Yeah. But I, I prayed and waited on God. Fasted right. seven days and seven nights, twelve days and twelve nights, right. losing sixty-five pounds in a week's time. Amen. Right. Down to just to a hundred pounds. Right. But I waited on God. That's right. That's right. Ah, That's right. Bible says, "They that wait on the Lord." I had a real, a very real divine experience with God. That's right. I didn't eat too much sweet potatoes and went to bed and had one of them heavy dreams. No, 
I didn't get a message from the strange sound of windshield wipers. That's right. You know, when you was a child and you listen to that windshield wipers, it seemed like it's talking to you. Right. My wife didn't push me in the pulpit. That's right. My father or my mother did not push me in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Bible school. Amen. Never had a biblical lesson from a university, from a seminary in my life. Mm -hmm. I had a real divine vision from God. That's right. Before God ever sent any man, mm -hmm. he make himself known to him. That's right. If God don't make himself known to you, you're out on your own. Mm -hmm. That's like being out with no, with, without a compass. Mm -hmm. So you have no sense of direction. God let us know what our job was, but didn't never let us know when it would start. Right. And I related this to my former minister, and he said, well, <laughs> this work you're talking about, uh, where are you going to get started at? I said, I don't know. He said, you see that? Mm -hmm. God ain't never told no one get started, do something, and then send them. They don't know where they're going. I said, he told Abraham. That's right. The book let us know. Abraham didn't know where he was going. Mm -hmm. But God led him. And he believed in the God of his salvation. Amen. So we started out in the cellar. Against no odds. <laughs> I say that because when it comes to God, we don't have no odds. Right. We were told we would never amount to anything. We were told straight up that no one would ever follow us. I even related uh, to the minister about the broadcast that God showed us. He said, God ain't told you nothing. You're not going to have no broadcast. He said, it took me 40 years to get where I am. Where was he? Nowhere. Nowhere. But standing in two empty buildings. That's right. He said, there's no way you're going to come out and do more work than what I done. Hmm. I didn't disrespect him because he was my elder. Mm -hmm. I respect him and stood quiet and listened. Wouldn't go word for word. I was raised better. But in my heart, I was blessed to be able to differentiate the voice of God versus personal feelings, wanting to do something right. versus the voice of the enemy, the devil. Mm -hmm. So I let him state his case and I held on to the case that God gave me. Mm -hmm. uh, when it came time to leave, by that time, the church was practically empty and there was nobody there but my wife, who was my ex-spouse wife at the time, and Jess Williams. Mm -hmm. The church was empty. My father, the minister disrespect him and my mother for years. My mother and father mortgaged their house two to three times to keep that church from folding up. And yet he was my uncle. Mm -hmm. But when God step in, there is no relationship. Right. None. I don't believe in sticking with something because it's blood. That's right. I believe in sticking with something because it's godly. Amen. Spirit mm -hmm. is thicker than blood. That's right. So when I was in my early teens, 14, 15, and 16, and I would sit and tell Williams and Brother Mike about this great vision that God showed me. Mm -hmm. I remember I talked to my older brother, Deke. Deke was so involved in his theology and until he told me the two things is wrong. Either God is dealing with you or our mother birthed the first and only retarded child in the house. <laughs> I admit I was hit by an 18 wheeler when I was seven. But that didn't do nothing up here. You must be able to distinguish the voice of God 
from having a disagreement with the preacher and then running out starting something. You must, when you say, the Lord said such and such unto me, it better be God. That's right. If not, that lie will damn you throughout eternity. In fact, to say God said something and he did not is blasphemy. That's right. Hmm. The prophet Jeremiah said, who is he that saith? And it come to pass when the Lord said it not. That's right. So, when it was just Williams and I and my wife at the time, my father, he left. He didn't go start the church. He said God didn't send him to lead people. He was just that honest. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not a leader. God did not send me to lead people. So he sat home and just read. He said, Gene. I said, yeah. He said, what you going to do? I said, Pop, the vision that God gave me, whenever God told me to move, I'll move. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you wait on God then. My mother would stop in time after time and check on her boy and see how he's doing, but she stuck with her husband. Mm -hmm. I understand. So my wife uh, would come and stop at each chair and usher nobody. That's right. There was no one in the building. That's right. Williams would read and we would preach and the building would be vacant. Vacant. But we would preach like the building was packed. That's right. I learned then, if you cannot be dedicated to one, That's right. you cannot be loyal to 1,000. Amen. You just can't. We started out in the basement, my home of my mother and father, and started out with 12 to 15 people. For heat, we used a pot, filled it up with water, turned the stove on, mm -hmm. make the pipes sweat. That's right. And then the Lord would bring heavy rains and water would come. The drain would back up, flood the basement out. Many a mornings before service would start, mud is washed all in the basement. We have to come down in the basement, clean everything up before the people come in. For a pulpit podium, we use the dresser yeah. and a tablecloth for a covering. That's right. And clothing still was in the dresser. That's right. But I believe that God could not lie. Yeah. And at his appointed time, he would surely bring to pass. One thing in the midst of that, God teaches you patience. Amen. For the book says, let patience have her perfect work. Oh, many times I got frustrated because see, I lack understanding. I thought as a result of the vision that things would move quick. Yeah. Glory to God, but it wasn't a pointy time. Uh -huh. I didn't have a clue that we would be in the basement five years and some change. Hmm. Many of our enemies would come visit us mm -hmm. and they felt sorry for us <laughs> because they didn't see no further than pipes right. and a concrete floor. And a drop ceiling. Mm -hmm. Without a vision, the word of God says the people what? Perish. Perish. From Jerome Street, we baptize over 350 souls while we're still in the cellar. That's right. Underground. Many would come by, make mockery. My informant minister, when he heard that we was in the basement, he artificially and hypocritically prophesied yes. and said, we would never come out of the cellar, never. Mm -hmm. I would be there till I'm old and die there. <laughs> Don't ever declare, thus saith the Lord, when the Lord said nothing. That's right. Because God have a way of making you a liar. From the basement, we went to Briar Road up in Mount Airy, where we rented a uh, 
recreation center of a Lutheran or Episcopalian church. Right. Church, God bless the recreation center, God filled it up. It was there where the Lord blessed us with the radio broadcast. That's right. Oh, we were so excited. Mm -hmm. We come on Sunday afternoon from 2.30 to 3.30 over short wave. By that time, it was falling in Africa, prime time. So after the morning service was over, people wouldn't even go eat. They'd be gathered around the radio with enthusiasm and excitement. Right. Listen to the shortwave program. <laughs> I prayed and asked God before our first year is up. We want 10 stations in an hour on all of them. Before our first broadcast anniversary, God gave us 11 stations and an hour on all of them. That's right. Before the first year was up. The second year of our uh, pastoring the brothers and sisters, we, Salisbury, Maryland came to work with us. Landover, Maryland came to work with us. Stafford, Virginia, or Fragersburg came to work with us. Very few in number. Yeah. In each location we went. In Stafford, there was only one member, Mother Greenhaw. We went there for 10 years, That's right. every single month, dedicated to one member. That's right. And Landover, Maryland, there was only about five. Yeah. We was there every month, preaching to five people. That's right. In Salisbury, Maryland, there was only a few there. People were so excited and so anxious until one mother, Mother Stackett, converted her garage to a little chapel. Mm -hmm. We held service in a garage. Mm -hmm. She cleaned the garage out, put wall to wall carpet in there. They built a little pulpit stand and podium and half folding chairs. And we was right there in the garage yeah. preaching. That's right. Amen. <laughs> That's why we don't frown upon small things. That's right. You should never forget where you came from and don't lose focus on where you are and paying attention to where you're going. Amen. God brought us here to Frankfurt Avenue and from Frankfurt, slowly but surely, before we even got to Frankfurt Avenue, the doors to the world started opening up. That's right. We've been broadcasting on the radio now for, oh my God, over 20 something years. But when God blessed us to get on television, mm -hmm. floodgates start happening. That's right. Now, the truth of God is one of the most controversial programs in the world to date. Amen. And the best thing that have ever happened to television. Amen. <laughs> this is not a program, this is not a religious program of money hustle. You won't find that here. There is no prosperity plan no. not with houses and cars and money and land that's right the greatest form of prosperity is wisdom knowledge mm -hmm. and divine understanding who god is that's right you can have all the money you want that's right. if you don't know god you don't have nothing, nothing. Live in your mansion, drive your car, sell in your yacht. Yeah. But if you don't know God, yeah. you don't have nothing. nothing. What doeth profit a man mm -hmm. to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? From that time until now, the God of heaven has stood with us. That's right. Proven over and over again that our enemies were wrong. That's right. Now we have new enemies. New, enemies. new generation of enemies. That's right. Who 
all carry the same germ and the same virus that our old enemies carry. But we have the same antidote and will give you the same treatment Amen. to rectify your problem. We promote God. We lift God up. We glorify him. He alone mm -hmm. is worthy to bow to. That's right. There is no God but one. We all bear witness to that. That's right. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. Mm -hmm. There is no God before him. God Almighty is not begotten. That's right. God is not born. Amen. God have no beginning and God have no ending. That's right. God have no partners. No. God have no brother. No. God have no sister. No. God have no mother. That's right. He is God alone. Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Oh, yes. So viewers, we are indebted to him. God's mercy, we're laboring around the world in so many foreign countries and here in America. And there's no need for no one to come now and convince me what the Most High is not capable of doing. Right. It's not that many people can say they had a real divine vision from God and then watch it materialize. That's right. Oh, I, I don't experience people coming up prophesying. I don't despise prophecy. I listen to it. And then I weigh it out. Right. I'm not excited by it. No. I weigh out prophecy. That's right. Because scriptural knowledge calls me to evaluate where this prophecy is coming from. That's right. I don't sit in my chair and shake and roll and rattle. <laughs> Even if the prophecy know the contents of me. I still don't get excited. Someone say, why not? Because the devil, the devil that's right. can know the contents of you. Oh, yes. The devil knew what God told Abraham. That's right. And to stop Abraham, devil come to him as an old man. That's right. To stop the work. Stop it. He seen he couldn't conquer Abraham. What does he do? He come to Isaac as a young man. That's right. Trying to change God's setup or God's standard. So yes, the enemy knows. He admitted that he knows. He said, Jesus, I know. I know. 